Listen, I want to read the Word of God to you from 1 Samuel chapter 20, verse 34. Listen to the Word of God. Jonathan left the table in fierce anger and refused to eat on that second day of the festival, for he was crushed by his father's shameful behavior towards David. This is what I want to talk about with you on this morning, dealing with disappointment. I believe a whole lot of you have been let down. You've been dealing with disappointment in your life, and you have not overcome that hurt from that disappointment. I believe God's going to give you the victory on this morning, dealing with disappointment. But before we jump into the Word, join with me as we worship God this morning. These are the days of Ezekiel. The dry bones become in his flesh. And these are the days of your servant David, building a temple of praise. And these are the days of the harvest. The fields are as wide in the world. These are the Father God, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, me and Pastor Amy, we join our faith with your wonderful people here on this morning. Father God, we pray that the Holy Spirit would speak to them. Lord, there is nothing to be compared with hearing the Word of God and understanding it and knowing how it applies to our situation. Lord, you said in the book of Jeremiah chapter 23 verse 15, that there will come a time you will give your people pastors who will feed them with knowledge and understanding. Lord, your word says in Proverbs 10, 21, the lips of the righteous feed many. Help us to feed your people this morning. Give them a heart to receive, an ear to hear, a mind to understand, and the will to obey. Bless them beyond measure. Let the Word of God come alive to them. Make it so simple that even a child could understand what the Holy Ghost is saying this morning. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Somebody say, Amen. Good morning to you, saints of the Most High God. We are continuing our wonderful series, Overcoming Adversity. And I want to hear your comments. Let us know what you think about the series. Let us know what it's doing for you. We want to hear from you. On this morning, I want to talk about dealing with disappointments. Dealing with, have you ever been disappointed? Have you ever disappointed somebody else? Didn't it make you feel awful? Have somebody else ever disappointed you and let you down? We've, we've all dealt with it. We've disappointed other people. Don't act like you just want to receive it and don't even play that game. I've let folks down before. I've disappointed people. Uh, come on. We, we all have and people have disappointed us. But I want to talk about dealing with disappointment because sometimes in our walk with God, there are people who come into our lives that we trust, we love, we appreciate them, and they get close to us, and you open your heart and your life up to them. As long as you are breathing, you're going to disappoint people, and people are going to disappoint you. It's a part of life. But some disappointments can really knock the life out of us. Have you been there? I know I have. Let's go into First Samuel chapter 20, beginning at verse 26 through 34. Listen to the word of the Lord. Saul didn't say anything about it that day, for he said to himself, Something must have made David ceremonially unclean. But when David's place was empty again, the next day, Saul asked Jonathan, Why hasn't the son of Jesse been here for the meal either yesterday or today? Now Saul is getting suspicious. David is his employee. David works for Saul. Are you listening to me? No call, no show. <laughs> That's not working. And Jonathan intentionally not 
tell Saul what, what David did because Jonathan wanted to see for himself whether his dad was really plotting evil this time to try and kill David. So watch this. Jonathan replied, David earnestly asked me if he could go to Bethlehem. He said, please let me go, for we are having a family sacrifice. My brother demanded that I be there, so please let me get away to see my brothers. That's why he isn't here at the king's table. King Saul isn't stupid. He's a king. He has a lot of wisdom, knowledge, understanding. He, he realized immediately, Jonathan is covering for David. Now watch his reaction. Verse 30 says, Saul boil with rage at Jonathan. Listen to what he says. You stupid son of a whore. He swore at him. Do you think I don't know that you want him to be king in your place, shaming yourself and your mother? Saul said, you love David so much that you're willing to let him be king and even be king instead of you. You are my son. You should be blah, blah, blah. But Saul was completely out of order. He swore at his son. He called his mama a whore. And watch what else he did. He said in verse 31, as long as this, that son of Jesse is alive, you'll never be king. Now go and get him so I can kill him. What a bold statement. But you see, King Saul overplayed his hand. He underestimated Jonathan and David's commitment and loyalty and love towards one another. Only the Holy Spirit can create that kind of love towards the people of God and towards each other to the point that Jonathan was willing to go against his dad's evil plan to harm David and to hurt him. You need people like Jonathan in your life. Every David needs a Jonathan. And we know every Peter, James, and John need that Jesus. You need somebody in your life to cover for you. You can't do this by yourself. That's why the Bible says in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. Because when you have counselors in your life, they see things from a different angle. And all those counselors together can rescue you from a whole lot of mistakes. Are you listening to me? Now watch this. Jonathan said, but why should he be put to death? Jonathan asked his father, what has he done? David didn't do anything wrong. Then Saul soon hurled his spear at Jonathan, intending to kill him. So at last, Jonathan realized that his father was really determined to kill David. Jonathan left the table in fierce anger and refused to eat on that second day of the festival, for he was crushed by his father's shameful behavior towards David. Jonathan was crushed. He was let down. He was disappointed. His father, who was his hero, who he looked up to, had acted in an awful manner, giving in to an evil spirit, hurled a javelin at Jonathan. We know he had threw some javelins at David in the past, but now this is his own son that he's throwing a javelin at. Jonathan was, the Bible says, he was crushed by his father's shameful behavior towards David. Have you been in a situation lately that crushed you, that knocked the life out of you, that knocked the wind out of you, that let you down to the point that you wanted to say, I'm done with this. I can't do this anymore. I'm talking to somebody this morning who's been disappointed. Maybe it's a husband who disappointed you. Maybe it's a wife. Maybe it's a child. Maybe it's a pastor. Maybe it's another church member. Maybe it's somebody in your family. Somebody I've disappointed you. This is a part of life, saints. Just because disappointments happen, it doesn't mean we fold. It doesn't mean we cave and throw the towel in. God's going to see you through it. He's going to get you through this. And all my life you have been faithful. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, sing it with me. All my life, and all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, and I will sing of the goodness of God. Come on, tell him your goodness is running after me. Sing it to the king. 
Your goodness is running after, is running after me. Singing to the King. Your goodness is running after, is running after me. With my life laid down, I'm surrendered now. I give you everything. Your goodness. Listen, you may be disappointed. You may be crushed like Jonathan. You didn't see it coming. He caught you off guard and knocked the wind out of you. In past time, you want to join our faith and pray for you. Father God, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we join our faith with your wonderful people here on this morning. That you revive them. That you take their disappointed, broken heart and mend it back together again. Strengthen them and restore them. David said, he restores my soul. Restore their soul. Set them free from hurt. Mend together that wound, God. Mend together that broken heart. That disappointment that, that crushed them and have brought them to a point of discouragement and some people don't even feel like moving on this morning. Listen, you got to shake yourself. God's not through with you. That's why the Bible says two, two are better than one. Because if one falls, the other can help him up. You need people in your life. God's sending this broadcast to help you this morning. To heal you. And to set you free from that hurt, that wound in your spirit. That knocked you off course. That actually knocked you backwards a thousand steps it feels like. God's going to help you make up for lost time. He said, I'll restore to you the years that the caterpillar and the canker worm have stolen from you. God is going to make it up to you, saints. He is going to make it up to you in the name of Jesus. Lift every burden from off their shoulders, Lord. Heal them, revive them, restore their faith, their confidence in you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Somebody say amen. Listen, I want to give somebody a chance to come to Jesus. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He loves you with an everlasting love. He is your God. He cares about you. He cares about you. Listen, without any further hesitation, I want you to bow your head and say this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe you are the Son of God. I believe you died on Calvary Cross for me. They crucified you in cold blood. They buried you in a borrowed tomb. But on the third day, God raised you from the dead. You are now seated at God's right hand. And soon and very soon, you are coming again. From this day, I turn my back on the world, the flesh, and the devil to serve the true and living God and his son jesus christ thank you lord for saving my soul amen if you prayed that prayer with me and meant it with all of your heart let me and my beautiful wife past amy be the first to say to you welcome into the family of god your sins have been forgiven we want you to type below this video right now i've just surrendered my life to Jesus. Do it right now and welcome into God's family. You are on your way to heaven. To give in this offering, you can visit us online at seanpinder.net forward slash give. You can also give through the ministry app. You can also give through the ministry PayPal account. That address is paypal.me forward slash seanpinderministries. 
You can also give through the Ministry Zell account. The Ministry Zell email address is info at seanpinder.net. You can also give through the Ministry Cash App account. The Ministry Cash App address is the dollar sign Sean Pinder Ministries. You can also give through the Ministry Venmo account. The Ministry Venmo account is at Sean Pinder Ministries. You can also text to give. All you have to do is text the letters SPM to the number 45888 and a link will automatically be sent to you. You can also give by mailing your donations into the ministry. Just remember to make your checks and money orders out to Sean Pinder Ministries, P.O. Box 2726, McKinney, Texas 75070. Zero. Listen, me and Pastor Amy, we love all of you. We appreciate you. And a tremendous, a huge thank you to our, to our partners who make this broadcast possible to help us take this gospel around the world. We love all of you. Join us again on tomorrow morning for another morning prayer broadcast. God bless you.